first off, I want to say thank you to everyone who watched my video on building this studio. I'm still in the honeymoon phase and I'm loving every minute of it. Some other cool news is I ordered the Warm Audio WA87 microphone. It will be here next week. I'm gonna do a review video. If this video has been up for a while, I will link that video right here. If it's not there, I haven't got the mic yet. I'm super excited about that. All right, today I'm going to record some drums using the Universal Audio Apollo X8P audio interface. We'll take a look at the Apollo console and how these drums sound in this new room that I built. Let's get into it. Okay, so here it is. This is the Apollo X8P audio interface. It has eight mic pre's built in and I have it connected via ADAT light pipe to my Focusrite Scarlet interface, which also has eight mic pre's. I'm gonna be using probably 13 of them on the drums today. You can control all of your inputs and settings via their software called Console. We'll go through that in a second, but first let's check out the microphones on the drum kit. All right, so let's look at how we have console set up with the mics going in, mic pre input level, and whatever else you might see. All right, we'll pull up console here. Okay, so I'm using uh, 9, 10, 11 inputs, not 13. Okay, so uh, one through eight are all the Universal Audio Apollo mic pre's. 9, 10, and 11 are the mic pre's from my Focusrite. And what I'm doing is I'm using console to monitor the drums as I'm recording instead of monitoring through Pro Tools. So when I open Pro Tools and I'm recording, I actually keep all of the drum tracks muted and I create a drum headphone mix in my console software. That's why you see all of these faders balanced how they are and that just prevents any latency in the headphone mix as I'm recording. You can see I'm using the Unison mic pre's in Apollo with the UAD 610 modeling and uh, I mean I can just sort of scroll through here you can see up on the top under input what the level is set for the preamp. They're all on mic. My overheads have phantom power, the phase flipped, and my uh, input seven, which is my kick out mic, also has phantom power on it. Now down here in your inserts cells, you can actually put on processing, and then depending on how you have your insert effect selected, you can record the processing going into Pro Tools or just monitor. I actually have them on record, and I think I have them bypass. Okay, so there's something going on with the snare. And this, oh. Okay, and the uh, 1176 is doing some pretty heavy compression on the room mics. That was an accident. Um, however, I will say a lot of good things do come from accidents, so we'll just, uh, we'll just see how it sounds. Now if we go down here, to the clock section, you can see I have it on ADAT because I am connecting my focus right to the Apollo X and they are clocking together at 48K. And yeah, that's really it. It's super simple. I like the real time, no latency monitoring that I can do through it. This is my favorite part. So when I get a mix and I have all my levels going here, this is a sound that I really like and I like the monitoring to track to. What I can do is I can go up here to menu and I can hit save as and I can actually save my console setup as my drum setup here so I'll hit save replace yes so check this out now anytime I want to change my inputs or my console uh, let's say I'm overdubbing some vocals or anything else and I need to change some stuff I can do that freely and then if I need to come back to recording drums, I go up here to menu and I hit open 
and I can just pull in my my setup like I have here and it will recall everything perfectly how I left it so I don't coming back and doing recalls and overdubbing is so sick I'm super pumped about this so yeah let's record some drums and see how this sounds because uh, it's awesome okay So let's um, take a listen to these tracks individually, shall we? Okay, so I've got several buses. This is kind of how I like to roll. There's a music bus, which has all the instruments that run through it, a vocal bus. There's no vocals on this. Um, the drum bus, there's a drum room, which is a little bit of reverb. Uh, and then I have a separate kick aux track for the two kick mics to be processed through. Uh, we got my kick in mic, kick out mic, snare top, tom one, tom two, overheads, mono, room, hat. I have thrown a couple plugins on on my drum bus. There's one bell cut in the 3K range. This is because the uh, ride symbol I was using, uh, the sweet ride, didn't necessarily doesn't necessarily sound so sweet in the 3K range. And instead of pulling it out on any individual mic, I just pull it out on the whole bus, and that keeps a better phase relationship between all of the mics and then underneath that you can see I have the P legacy Pultec from Universal Audio and this is just a little smiley face a little bump on the uh, 16k and a, just a small little bump on 100 Hertz and then I have the slate digital uh, bus compressor which I basically always use on my drum bus and my music bus so there's a little bit of serial compression going on here all right, and then when we get into the individual tracks, you can see my kick in and kick out mic are summed into a kick aux. So let's listen to the uh, kick in mic on its own. No surprises there. I've been using the AKG D112 for over 10 years on my kick in and uh, it's, it's exactly what I'm looking for. Just a little bit of bite in the mid range, not too much low end, not too much high end. Uh, it doesn't give you that super slappy feel. And as you can see, I have the two kick mics going through a fab filter EQ, pulling out some low mids, uh, adding in a little bit of the 1000 and then a little bit of the slap overall. Now you can see the FabFilter Pro Q3 is processing both kicks together, so let's listen to the uh, kick out mic on its own and then we'll listen to the others together. So the kick out mic is about seven inches away from the resonant head on the front of the kick. Um, so you're getting a little bit of that room and a little bit of the bounce of the floor in front of the drum kit. And when we put these two together, it's great. Inside and outside, and then I have my Universal Audio 1176 processing them both together uh, with a, you know, you can see it. Just a little bit of a, just kissing it about one and a half db to max three db of gain reduction on the compressor uh, and the snare i'm just using one snare mic it's the sm57 
beautiful. Uh, I have the Pro Q3, which is pulling out a little bit of the low mids, adding in some mid range, and that's it. Um, I also have the 1176. I think the 1176 is doing the same thing. Just a little bit of a little bit of gain reduction on both the kick and the snare. Put both those in. This is a rock song that I'm playing with some fairly aggressive sounding drums. So the the Black Beauty snare is tuned higher and has more of a bite sound to it. Uh, and then we can add in the overheads. Actually, let's listen to the overheads on the, by themselves. There's nothing going on on them. So the overheads are in XY, which has a nice close stereo image with a with a very good phase relationship. And then when I pop the snare in, the way that I the height that I place my overheads at that I like the sound of with in relation to the snare always is out of phase with the snare drum. So I'll flip the polarity and it will all of a sudden the snare shows up. So when you can see the difference between no overheads and then overheads. with overheads. Okay, and then we'll add in the mono kit. The mono kit is just over my shoulder at about this height right here, probably about eye level. And it's just hearing what my ear hears, which is just that level of the snare, the kick drum, the toms, everything from my perspective, which I really like that particular perspective on sound. So when you add that in with the overheads, it sounds tremendous. Without. With. And then when I pull it up, Sweet. All right, the hi-hat, I'm using this SM7 right here, which the SM7, if you never use it on drums, you can throw it on any drum and it's gonna sound tremendous. Uh, hi-hats sound really nice because it gets a, uh, a smoother sound from the hi-hat instead of being too harsh or too, too mid-rangey or anything like that. I love it. On my hi-hat, all I'm doing is just rolling off some low end up to about 164 and then just high shelf pulling out about 1 dB of about 9.5K. So, you can hear it. Beautiful. And then for the rooms, we're using the AEA R88 stereo ribbon mic, which is a very cool mic. Let's check out the R88 on its own. All right, and then with the kit. All right, so what I'll do is I'll, I'm gonna do an AB, we'll listen without the room mic and then add it in. Here's without. In. I'll pull it up a little bit.
sweet. It's nice to have that depth of the room. Yeah, I mean, there's not too much on the on the toms. I think there's a little bit of a bump on the mids and the low mids. And then I just have these Fab Filter gates, which are awesome, um, super effective. Some of the best gates for toms if you if that's your thing, bro. All right, so let's check out these toms. Uh, we'll listen to them isolated. The toms are the Audix microphones, the i5 on rack tom and the D4 on floor tom. All right, and then uh, with the kit. Fantastic. The way that I'll do, if I'm gonna add any uh, processed reverb or room sound, uh, I'll find the sound. I'll, pro I'll sometimes I'll mess with it depending on the style of the music. Meaning I might throw a compressor at the end of it and then a little bit of EQ to sort of sort of shape the reverb around the drum sound so it's not too distracting. And uh, I won't send any direct mics. I'll just send a little bit from the overhead mics. So you can see I'm sending, you know, just a, just a very small amount from the overheads to the room and we pop that in. Okay, so here's the full kit with no reverb, all of the mics open. Okay, and then with the reverb added. Sweet. Brings tears to my eyes. The way that I would work, if I'm mixing, you know, it's going to be a lot different because you're going to have a lot of different elements, you're going to have other instruments, you're going to have vocals and stuff like that. So there's going to be a, a lot, sometimes more complicated um, of a mix process, sometimes less. But in this scenario, you basically want to keep as much of the natural sound of the drums and the rooms as possible because it's just, it's a, it's just a drum video, you know, it's just drums. You don't want it to be too weird. I, in, in this case, I didn't want it to be. I didn't want there to be any funny business going on. There's no sampling. There's no, you know, if anything, there's reverb. I will say this Universal Audio Apollo X is absolutely awesome. If you're thinking about getting it, it's such a good buy. I particularly, this is like my dream setup here for this room and what I do in here. Absolutely love it. 16 inputs. Eight mic pre's, they're great mic pre's. Using the console software to be able to mess with and to be able to record processing going in and be able to m get your headphone mix going with no latency, that's so cool to me. Two big thumbs up from me. If it's not your cup of tea, what's your favorite audio interface? Tell me down below in the comments. Uh, I'd love to find out. I'd love to try something else. The Focusrite has been pretty fun for me up until I got the uh, Universal Apollo. I gotta admit, they're great together and you know, using the ADAT and connecting them is super easy and sounds great. And yeah, if you have any other questions about the interface, let me know down in the comments. If you have any questions about my setup, mics, why I'm using it, let me know. I might do another video where I talk more in depth about mic placement and particular mics that I use and the drums and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, if you like the video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. If you like the channel, go ahead and hit subscribe. A great way to support the channel is to actually share this video. So if you do like the video, please share it with a friend or share it to Facebook or whatever you use. It really helps support the channel and it helps me and I'm very appreciative. Thank you very much again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.